Seven years ago, I was the proud young father of a son, Gijs, age three, and a daughter, Lara, aged one. And I was working for a very old-school Italian publishing company. At around the same time, I'd read, read this trend-watching report saying that the average Dutch 12-year-old was spending two hours a day instant messaging with their school friends, and that there was a massive boom in online games being played by kids, with TV time rapidly shifting to free-to-play gaming platforms like Spelen.nl. At around the same time, I started looking around for schools for Gijs, and I was reading up on education. And I learned about all the problems that education was and still is facing. Shortage of quality teachers, overcrowded classrooms, limited IT funding, and increasingly demanding and highly educated parents putting pressure on teachers, and no practical way to tailor instruction to each kid's needs. Teachers under pressure, parents concerned with the quality of education that their kids were getting, and the government saying that they needed to cut back on education. How was Gijs ever going to get the same quality of education that I got? This was really keeping me up at night. And then, bang, it hit me. What if you could create an online game that kids would play after school with their friends that would actually help them do better at school? Then you could use kids' passion for online activities and the time they'd be spending on this anyway after school to improve learning and to take pressure away from the struggling teachers and provide a solution for parents' sleepless nights. I went to work on this. Six months later, I teamed up with a game developer and a teacher and had a working prototype being tested by 200 average 12-year-olds in fifth grade. These kids, in just a period of three weeks, had answered 60,000 practice questions in their own free time after school. That's more than 300 questions per child. Why? Because they enjoyed it. How come? How can this be? Because we'd given them a simple multiplayer quiz game around the practice questions. The kids were battling with their friends, earning points and winning contests. They were having fun and therefore continued. That they were each doing hundreds of revision exercises, helping them to improve their grades, was a bonus to them, but definitely didn't deter them from wanting to keep playing. And what impressed me the most was the response from the teachers. They were completely amazed to see the impact on results and kids' motivation. And this was magnified with the students that were lagging behind. These kids were as eager as the rest to play the game and were in it to win it, just like the other kids. This experience convinced me to quit my job at the Italian publishing company and go all in to make this impact accessible to as many kids as I could. And the experiment went on to become a learning program called Scuola. Five years since launch, hundreds of thousands of kids have access to Scuola. And more than 500 million extra minutes of time after school has been spent learning maths, reading, science, and social studies. 500 million minutes that hasn't been spent on instant messaging and casual gaming. This is all very nice. But what really happened here? What did this tell me? It taught me that play is the single most powerful secret weapon in education. Have you ever had an experience where your favorite teacher played a game in class to explain something, and that now, years later, you still remember the game and the explanation? 
In high school, I had Mr. Grayshik, who taught me economics, and explained us the law of diminishing marginal utility. What's that law? It says that every time you consume an additional unit of something, the satisfaction or utility you get from that additional unit decreases. Mr. Grayshik made us come to school early without having eaten breakfast. And he gave us a cracker to eat. And we had to grade this cracker. Hungry as we were, we all gave the cracker an A or an A+. Plus. Then he gave us another cracker. Again, many A's and A+. Pluses. And this continued until the 10th cracker. <laughs> By that time, the grades had dropped to C's, D's, and F's. After that experience, nobody in our class ever forgot the law of diminishing marginal utility. And to this day, I still remember that law. The power of a game. So we all agree games are a hugely powerful instrument for learning. Yet they're still hardly being used in education. Why not use kids' passions to motivate them for learning? Motivation is key to improving learning outcomes. But do we understand kids' worlds? Do we even know how to motivate them? Do we as educators still know how to play? If you ask me, I don't think we are using education's most powerful secret weapon. If we're able to truly engage kids around the curriculum, then they'll love to learn. Not just in school, but after school, before school, during holidays, during road trips, anytime, anywhere, any place. I think we should start by diving in and making an effort to really understand kids' perceptions. What makes them tick? What drives their love of learning? What are their favorite games? And how can we link them to the curriculum? Here's three steps I think education should take. First, let's stop developing new textbooks. They're not interactive, and they're so far away from kids' worlds that they must feel medieval to them. Second, let's involve kids in designing how we teach. Because they're the true innovators. We consult groups of kids in our office every week. They tell us how they want to learn, and we build it for them. Third, let's consider educational gaming as the new homework. If learning is fun, then kids will learn anytime, any place, anywhere. So also after school. But what can you do tomorrow? Why not start by pretending to be one of today's kids? How does that feel? Why not install Instagram, Minecraft, Snapchat, Clash of Clans, Pet Rescue, Candy Crush on your phone today and spend 30 minutes every day for the next week on these apps. And afterwards, write down five new insights, five new insights this has given you about today's kids and how they perceive the world. And any ideas for how you can make your learning materials, your lessons, your educational policies, or simply how you help your child with their homework more engaging. Have fun changing education. Thank you.